Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to another Wednesday night Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada, and the engineer that you will be asking questions of later. With me is Mr. Lady Ada. We're here at the Ada Food Factory in downtown Manhattan, so we do all of our testing, design, shipping, prototype, manufacturing, and all the other electronics and goodness that you know and love, including making cool content that you can uh, follow along or watch, which is what we're doing right now. This is a live show. Got a lot of exciting stuff for you tonight. Last week we had the unboxing for Adabox, so we've got a doubly jam-packed show for you tonight. We gotta get right to it. So why don't you tell them what's on tonight's show? Yeah, this is a really big show. It's well, massive. On tonight's show, the code is Code Academy because we are celebrating the first ever hardware course with Code Academy using CircuitPython. Adafruit Code Academy teamed up, and we're really excited about this. So we're doing. The discount code. Discount code applies to everything except for the Code Academy, which is available on our site because it's a virtual item, gift certificates, and Ada Box. But, but the, the Code Academy is already it's already fifty percent off, heavily discounted. So it's already it's already that discounted. is the discount code tonight that'll help you remember and do check out Code Academy. And you get ten percent off all the hardware that you would use if you want to follow the course. That's right. Okay, show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady Ada will go over those and more. We have a ton, a ton. Time. of Python on Hardware News this week. Back to the mailbag, going to stop by, read your emails to us. We got some news in the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers, past, present, and future, and some events. Help wanted. We have our new jobs board video we're going to show this week. Ooh. That's really cool. Um, we have twice double serving of uh, 3D printing videos because we were doing the unboxing video last week, so we got double versions of those, of speed ups and more. And we have Made in New York City factory footage here from Adafruit. We got new products. We'll answer your questions. We'll do that on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. We can join 11,000 of us. We're almost at 12,000, so it's going to be time to change that banner. We'll do some top secret at the end. We'll answer your questions, all that and more on, you guessed it. Yay. Ask an engineer. OK. OK, um, Lady Ada, yeah. you know that code is Code, code Academy, Academy for tonight, but um, people get free stuff when they check out on our site. Correct. What do they get? If you order $99 or more, you get a free Pernoporto half-size breadboard. It's the same size and shape as a half-size solderless breadboard, but you can solder to it with these nice gold traces, and it's got a solder mask that matches a solderless breadboard, so it's really easy to transfer your project over when you're done with it. These are handy. We've been giving them away for a couple of years, and uh, nobody's complained. People like them. At 149 or more, you'll get one of a multitude of badges available. We have like six or seven different badges. We just got a ton extra, and we thought, hey, let's like, give these away um, to people when you order 149 or more. Um, so you can get soldering or microcontrollers or robotics or like we I think we put in a Bitcoin badge or like 3D rendering or dumpster diving. Um, you get a random one each time. And if you make an account, we'll send you a different one each time. So you should definitely make an account. That's right. 1 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping. This is the high quality trackable shipping, insured shipping in the United States. This is only in the lower 48 states. Um, but it's really good quality shipping. We recommend it for all your delicate electronics. We're not shipping around locks. We're shipping around electronics. And uh, we want to make sure they get to you safe and sound. That's why we like UPS ground. That rhymed. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Okay. And at 299 or more, you get a free Circuit Playground Express, which you can use on the Code Academy site to learn Circuit Python. You can also use it with MakeCode, uh, with TypeScript, with uh, Arduino, with Circuit Python, and a bunch of other languages. It's our easy, uh, easiest by far way to learn coding and making with LEDs, sensors, and all built into a round board. Okay. And as Lady Ada said, UPS Ground, that's best for U.S. Postal. UPS Ground, more. safe and sound. And DHL International is the best deal. If you're in Manhattan and you check up before 11 a.m., we have same-day delivery here around New York City. Okay, show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their projects jam-packed this week. Lady Ada, who's on the show and tell and what they share? Thanks for asking. Yes, we had a bunch of people show up, including a lot of Adafruit folks. Erin came by and previewed her umbrella. She's got a make coat umbrella from uh, that looks like the, sh the uh, garnet shield from um, Steven Universe. And uh, when you spin and twirl the umbrella, it changes the design. And it's uh, waterproof and it's solderless. You can take it outside. Um, it's a really easy cosplay project and fun for everyday wear. Um, Philby showed off a Boing demo. One of the things that he wanted to check out 
was overclocking and optimization for the Sam 51. It's already a pretty fast chip. It's a Cortex M4 running at 120 megahertz. But could we run it faster? Could we say run it at 200 megahertz? And could we turn on a lot of compiler optimizations? Turns out the answer is yes. And he got three times optimization, uh, three times speed up for free, basically, um, just by typing in a couple numbers. And uh, he said it ran overnight. Um, so we're going to be adding that as a drop down selection in Arduino so people can optimize their projects. And I can't wait to try it out because I have a couple of projects that were a little slow. Uh, I think they will be at full speed thanks to this update. Um, JP uh, showed off a preview. This week's project is a League of Legends trophy. A League of Legends has an API, and you can use PyPortal to easily grab uh, summoner stats and data and display it on a trophy. So that could be kind of cool. You could also have a leaderboard you could design as well. Check out JP's workshop. It's back in action tomorrow. Uh, last week we had the AdaBox unboxing, but we have a couple more AdaBox projects to do before we get into some more fun stuff. Brian uh, wanted to show off uh, some tools around his desk. Uh, building all sorts of boards, he's testing a pressure sensor, how to uh, create pressure uh, on a board, especially a, a relative pressure sensor. Turns out a solder sucker works great. Just, just plug it right on there, especially the nice engineer ones with their silicone tips, and you can use it to uh, push air in or pull air out of a sensor. So very good for plotting and testing your data uh, for your sensor. Also a little LED board hack that he built was cool. No and Pedro showed off this week's 3D Hangouts project, RoboFish. This is one of the coolest projects they built. Um, this is a cricket and a dual extruded filament, UV and magnetic to make these magnetic, uh, these fish that swirl around when the cricket um, uh, robotic motor spins around. So you can use, uh, you can make fish, you can make octopodes, octopodes. I don't know how to yeah. That. So um, here's the thing about this project. If you're, if you're an educator in particular, a lot of times 3D printers are bought, but they're not used. Yeah. And, and then people will sometimes like, oh, there's lots of different filaments, but they don't have a project for it. Yeah. And a lot of people will 3D print the Yoda head, and they're like, there has to be more into life than this. Yeah. And one of the things that this does is combine all those things. So you have LEDs, UV LEDs. You have robotics. electronics and robotics. You have make Magnets. code and or circuit Python. You have 3D filament, 3D printing and, and filament with magnetic properties, and you learn about light and motion and hinges. So this is kind of like the, it hits all the things in the like, yeah. what could 3D printing be? Um, and I didn't see a single project like this. And so when we sent it over to Noah and Pedro, they, they, uh, they totally they, they're, did it. they're like, oh my gosh. And the other neat thing is if you like to do science fiction props, um, this is for you. Yeah, it looks super cool. Yeah. I could totally imagine this set being you know, on somebody's shoulder and it's like a little like yeah. liquid friend or like... There, there's lots of things it. you can do. Um, like a brain in a jar that moves around. Like. Yeah. yeah. All right. It also shut off an insert tool. So they're doing these, um, these heat inserts for a future project and they have to insert a lot of them. So they made uh, a plunge tool to make it really easy. And I was like, this is the coolest thing. So maybe that next week's project will be how to build yeah. your own insert tool. And then Scott... Is working uh, a ton on 4.0.0 release. Uh, we're getting close to release candidate. Um, thanks to everybody who's testing Circuit Python. If you haven't tried out Beta 7, please do. We are squishing so many bugs. It is bug squishing month um, on our road to release candidate. We'd like to do a release soon. But meanwhile, he's distracting himself by um, building a Celeste demo or rebuilding his Celeste demo uh, for 751. He ported Celeste over. Um, from Lua for the Pico 8 to CircuitPython, and it runs. It runs slowly, but it does run. And uh, so he showed that off, and uh, people who want it, it's slow, but it, it's functional. Uh, we'll be doing more optimizations, just like you saw Phil B got three times performance, yeah. just for some compiler options. We have lots of optimizations to do in CircuitPython to get that sped up. Uh, we also had some visitors from around the world. We had Jeff, who's an EMT, and they have Quiz Night to get the EMTs, I guess, quizzed up on what to do when people are bleeding all over the place. And um, apparently they, they don't have, they just have a, a buzzer and I guess it's based on the judge who the judge thinks buzzed in first, which has caused um, EMT fights, which are bloody because they have like scalpels and like <laughs> they're, 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 there, they're there to help. They're there they're to help, help but like I still wouldn't want to get into a fight with the EMT. Yeah. Uh, especially because they're all really fast, right? So it's like how, you know, who's right. the fastest? So um, Jeff uh, made a cardboard box buzzer controller with four buzzers and LEDs and has an Arduino and it will light up who buzzed in first. So that's 
Good, but that got destroyed because I guess these EMTs are, are intense. And so now it's in a plastic ammo box and it's really durable and the ammo box it has, stores the electronics and the buttons. Looks really good. Um, maybe you can also store like a heart or something. Is Mike that- and Max worked together. Max had a book report on lightning and uh, they made a cool uh, poster board and it has a lightning bolt and the book report and then the clouds flash like it's thunder and lightning. Uh, and it looks awesome. And uh, Max got two awards, most creative, and then I can't remember the other one, but definitely most creative. Uh, it looked like an awesome book report, and most interactive and most interesting. Congratulations to Max, who's already uh, making making uh, reading more fun with all trying. No, there should be a publication. I'm not quite sure which publisher should do this, but they should do a book about book reports in in the modern era. Because book reports aren't just like standing up in front of the class and saying you read your book. Now it's like, here's a cool electronics project no, I made like, to illustrate the like thing. It's like here's a Minecraft level of like well, the book I read. So, so Max like did. Watership like, down. Well, <laughs> he, he showed lightning for his book report yeah. with LEDs and, you know, it, it looks like clouds and everything. But it, it'd be cool to have like a book report construction kit because it's really competitive in, in schools. Parents are paying for see, kids to get into schools. See, we've some science reports. I'm like, oh my goodness. These yeah. Are, these but it's so competitive kids. now. Yeah. I, think, I think the modern kid should get the edge. And have a cool book about book reports on like here's like all the cool projects. Well, this is I look an Arduino is thirty bucks. It's way cheaper than five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Also, Adam showed off a Tem. He's always coming by with electron microscopes. This one, a tiling electron microscope. Uh, I guess it shoots electrons through. And he, he did a little tour and showed off all the electronics. He's just he's just living he's living his best life with electron microscopes for sure. Yeah. And that was a show and tell. All right. All participants on the show and tell get an as seen on the show and tell sticker. It's part of our Adafruit live series of shows. Um, before we talk about JP stuff, um, Scott sent this in the mail, and uh, oh, it's, yeah, yeah, and this was part of. We showed it briefly on the show and tell, so I wanted to do this. Um, so Scott's working on this Game Boy cartridge that has Circuit Python running on it. So here it is in Adafruit Black. So flip yeah. it over to the other side. Oop. And this is the custom cartridge yeah. with the SAMD51 in it. It's got MIDI out. Yeah, Oops, excellent. and you, you can move it. around. And, uh, and we'll be doing lots of stuff on the blog about uh, Game Boy turning 30. And our next Ada box is game-themed. So it is a good time to be a gamer. And it's a good time to be an Ada box subscriber, and yeah. we will absolutely run out. Yeah, we'll we mention will. this again later. By the way, we're, we are actually yeah. going to run out very early. Yep. So if you want to get on this Ada box, you should do it now because it yeah. won't be like we'll last. Yeah, yeah, there won't be a lot left over okay. after a week or two. Um, so, JP's workshop is tomorrow at 4 Eastern Time, and we're going to do back-to-back make codes because we have one from last week and the one from the week before, so we have two make code minutes from JP. So, all together, it's about two, three minutes, and uh, check them out, and then we'll be back, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, make code away. Today in Make Code Minute, I wanted to talk about using an arcade joystick with the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. So what I'm talking about here, let me demo it first. Um, I have a Circuit Playground Express, and I've got it in our little case there. And then this is a typical arcade joystick, which is made using four limit switches. Um, so this is what you'll find in most arcade cabinets. And check this out. If I, oh, I've got it backwards. I'll try it that way. So depending on the direction that I push it, I've got lights lighting up, and I've also got uh, four little uh, tones beeping. And so the way I'm doing this inside of Make Code is that first on start, I'm setting four of the pins that array around the Circle Playground Express to be um, using the internal uh, pull resistors. So the setting pull pin um, to pull up type resistors on pins one, two, three, and four. And then I'm setting the NeoPixels uh, to be not so bright and sort of a lavender. And now this is the bulk of what's happening is I have this big if then or if else if else if else if else statement. Uh, And it's four copies of basically the same thing, which is to say if it is reading one of these pins and since we're setting them high with the pull-up resistor, when a pin reads low, it means that it's been activated. So if we're not getting a signal on that pin, it's actually when it's been pressed, then we're going to change the LED pattern on the NeoPixels, and we're going to play a tone. And so you can see on pin one, 
It points up on pin four, it points down, two left, and three right. And that is all there is to it. So once again, you can see, and down. Uh, and so we're able to use the four pins, unlike an analog joystick, it's a very simple type of construction. It's the same as using four buttons. And that is how you can use an arcade joystick with the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. Mm -hmm. It's the Make Code Minute. And for the Make Code Minute today, what I wanted to show you is how to use the accelerometer that's built onto the Circuit Playground Express to change the color of the NeoPixel LEDs on your Circuit Playground Express. Now, the way I'm going to do this, if you watch, I'm just, as I tilt, I'm going essentially through the entire rainbow of colors and back. It'll go dark when we go to green because of my green screen there and back to yellow. And the thing that I thought was interesting about this is check out how this is done with essentially one really uh, simple block of code inside of make code. So looking at this block, this is a forever block and what's inside it is set all pixels to and then we're using the hue, saturation and value block. But where the hue should be I'm using the map block, which is a math block that takes some value and maps its range to another range. And there I'm setting the rotation degrees in pitch from a low of negative 70 to a high of 70. And that's just this comfortable range I wanted to use for tilting the sensor. And I'm mapping that from 0 to 255. And 0 to 255 are the settings of the hue color wheel. And so you can see as I'm rotating to different values of that pitch, it is just very simply and elegantly and smoothly mapping our color through the hue color wheel. And so that is how you can use the pitch of the accelerometer on the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code to adjust the colors on your NeoPixels. Okay, and this week, this is an epic Newsweek for Python on hardware. Blinka, 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 um, blinka, blinka. We're actually getting some scoops and some breaking news in the world of, of Python on hardware now, too. Um, sometimes we make the news in our news, and other times we're just reporting on the news. So let's start off with um, some big Code Plus community, CircuitPython news. Code Academy plus CircuitPython. If you want to learn CircuitPython, there is now a long online course. And they're really good at teaching Pythons. This is actually a yeah. good mix. You can learn Python at Code Academy and then Circuit Python so you can like, yep. even if you don't know how to code at all, this is like the place to go to learn how to code. And uh, a couple things about it. Um, one, folks are already talking about it. This is very cool to see Circuit Python, a great uh, intro framework as well with a lovely collaboration. And that's from Noobcat, high praise. And then um, even people in the MicroPython community, this is awesome news. Congrats to all the folks working on Circuit Python over at Adafruit. Your hard work is paying off. It's from Matt who does a lot of MicroPython stuff. And uh, one thing, if you didn't know about Codecademy, they have helped over 45 million people around the world upgrade their careers with technology schools. The company's online interactive learning platform is widely recognized for providing accessible, flexible, and engaging experience for beginners and experienced programmers alike. So this is a big deal for us because this is the first time there's a course like this. Um, it's why we're celebrating it all week, and you'll see it all throughout the month. And we'll probably be stopping by the Code Academy offices, which are in New York, and we'll probably have them here. So we're going to be doing lots of stuff. So if you haven't already, please check it out. And it's a great course. And again, you don't know how to code. A lot of our, you know, we, we teach you how to build stuff, but we don't really teach you how to code that much. Code yeah. Academy is the place to go to learn how to code. Okay. Next up, in the wonderful world of calculators running. Oh, man. Um, calculators. Python. So there's this um, French textbook that has, like, here's the things that you have to learn. Here's the products that are doing it. And since Python is the national language of France, this particular catalog, you have to check out the notes that I have, um, has um, all the calculators, in particular, the Texas Instruments um, one, which runs TI Python, which is CircuitPython. So do check that out. That's a neat chart. It has the TI-83 Premium, the Casio um, Graph, I think 90E, the HP Prime, and then NumWorks, all um, Python running calculators, including CircuitPython. 
speaking of circuit python and MicroPython, Micro yeah. and celebrating anniversaries. Um, when did MicroPython uh, start? By well, that? there was debate about that. Instead of debating about it, I just emailed the creator, Damien. So, what did he say? April 29th, 2013, the first line of code written in private before anyone knew about it, before it was even called MicroPython. So that's the birthday. Wow. That's what we went with. It's going to be six years old, April 29th. September 17th, 2013, first code running on a microcontroller on the very first prototype of the Pi board. Ooh. October 2nd, 2013, registered MicroPython.org. October 4th, 2013, first commit, which is now the main repo. Late December 2013, source code up on GitHub. June 21st, 2014, last of the Kickstarter rewards sent out for the first Kickstarter. Wow, it's been like five years. It's amazing. Six years. Six years. Yeah. Well, since the... the um, yeah. The Kickstarter. We'll okay. Later. More. These are all the. This is all the. the this new, is also this breaking is, news. Yeah. Well, the EV3 well, is. That, that's right. EV3 is, EV3 is a little older, but people do do know it. So, um, MicroPython for Lego Mindstorms EV3 is here. It's a Visual Studio extension for programming the Lego Mindstorms. You can go to marketplace.visualstudio.com. Um, as of four fourteen, there was one hundred eighty one downloads. Let me see what it is up to now. Boop, 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 boop. Where are you looking up stuff live? I keep track of it. 441 downloads. So I like to keep track of stuff like this because it's like, oh, what's the rate of adoption? Yeah. And things like that. And there's like crazy, you know, one thing, there is like crazy intense Lego sites. So there's like unboxing Lego and like what Lego, Lego fan and Lego brick fan. party. And yeah, brick party is one. So this mm. is the new Lego Spike Prime. And someone leaked the data sheet. It's like a simplified version of the EV3. They're kind of bringing it back yeah. to the more. Since we, you know, we did the whole article about the cricket, about the origins. Well, this with the cricket board. The the data. This sheet got leaked, and then it quickly went away. So I downloaded it because I'm now in this like secret Lego community. And uh, one of the things it said was MicroPython operating system. So here's what here's we don't a, know. Here's another interesting thing. They have a five by five LED matrix, a lot like the micro bit. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so what do you not know? Well, here's what we don't know. Is it MicroPython on bare metal, or is it MicroPython for Linux, which is probably it, and it's just running on, like, a Linux computer? I think it's Linux. We'll see. But we'll I see. think, well, I don't know. We, we don't know. We, we don't know. Well, we don't know. We don't know. The EV3, that is um, a Linux computer, so yeah. that's probably what it is. Okay. So we can make educated one? guesses, but until we see the hardware, we don't know. For sure. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. So more Python in more places. Okay. Speaking of calculators, this is NumWorks, and you can run an emulator on it. I thought this was so cool. I found this by accident because I was looking for something else. And, yeah, there's people who are writing emulators for calculators. Yeah. So, we're, you know, we're working on some game platforms ourselves. But what's neat is to see is, like, the expectation is if you're going to have a calculator that runs Python, it's probably going to be fast enough to be a game emulator, too, which is really good for kids of all ages. Okay. Fun. We are getting close to release candidate for CircuitPython 4. We have a bunch of things about CircuitPython 4 that are going to be added. The latest beta, um, there's new support for pixel-based displays, display, display I.O., a port for the Nordic NRF 52840 microcontroller, including support for BLE beacon or a peripheral, USB MIDI support, and messages translated to multiple languages. Um, in addition to all this neat stuff, um, this was uh, a video that Scott posted, and you can uh, hear some of the cool things that you can do with MIDI and with CircuitPython, and of course, Lady Ada showed off this um, Game Boy. That was probably the one that was in that, that photo. I right. think that's one on the right. Yeah. Next up, here is um, a video from a professor who made a Pi Portal for all the classes. This is a very cool hypercard-like thing, and this is on the outside door, Professor John Gallagher. And uh, he teaches a lot of electronics yeah. and business innovation stuff, so this is very... I thought this was neat. This is handy, and this is at Boston College, which is yeah. near where I grew up. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, this is Tides on Pi Portal. This is Carter's project. It's epic. He actually did it two ways. One, there's this one first version that shows the high and low tides, and he also made a graphing element, and it actually graphs the tides over the day, so you can tell when it's going to be the highest and the lowest, and also like yeah. the rate of change. 
really nice project from Carter on taking the pipe portal to the next level. And because, like, you know, air quality is more important than ever because sometimes the air quality ain't so great, there is a air quality pipe portal project. A bicycle-powered circuit Python circuit playground board. Blitz over at Liz City is um, working on this cool project. She got her boards in, and this is an IR remote for circuit Python to control a cricket bot. This is the IR camera, um, and this is detecting, I think, the temperature of frozen meat. <laughs> yeah, you can see the blue blue blob is the meat. Yeah. This is... Um, it's like a ukulele, right? Yeah. But it's like it, a hacked ukulele? Yeah, and you can, you can control this... Uh, on this particular instrument, and you can use Python. Um, this was uh, some of the coming soon for Celeste on this is, iBadge, our this upcoming is the, gaming platform. Yeah, this is showing the Pico 8 cartridge, like the raw data being parsed from the cartridge. You can see all the icons, and at the bottom you can see the data. Yeah. I think it's what. I think that's what it is. First, it, top half is icons and second half is data. And then um, my headlines are getting easier to write. Circuit Python snicks its way to insert platform. Game Bueno. Um, the Game Bueno folks are porting Circuit Python to over one of their devices. They tell us in a couple of weeks they're going to have it up on GitHub. And uh, we hope to be stocking this device soon because it's yet another Circuit Python powered device. Deshi Poo did a really cool image of all the different ways that you can make games on Circuit Python. Python, Circuit Python and MicroPython? Boards. Yeah, you got OLEDs and Halloweens and the Pi Badge and Pew Pew. Including Tripwire, which is a little lady to battle Sparky. I know. I'm scared. I think this is like vacuum hackers. Yeah. And then um, we've talked about this and showed this, but this is some of the latest and uh, some of the variants of uh, Pi Badge. Not only did we post up the the PCBs, but we also posted up the uh, photos of the images of the PCBs, but also the schematic. We have the Grand Central. We'll be talking about that in our new product section. Um, and then there's some more um, Circuit Python running boards. Um, the Hackaday um, contest is happening. So a lot of people are posting up their, their Hackaday I.O. for the Hack Hackaday Prize stuff up. Um, this is a single board multi-core school robot. And then this one is, I'm trying to remember, I think it was a home automation. Yeah, Circuit it looks Python like a... Running. Like a uh, relay yeah, controller. Yeah, 16 channel smart home PLC. And then this is a um, Sam 51 Sam D51 J19 CPU board running circuit Python. Yes, we found this on GitHub. It's kind of cute. It's kind of like a squished Metro. Yeah, and then This is a um, watch from the badge badge hacking. These are all the badge hacking and I think the badge stuff you can go to badge.team and has a bunch of MicroPython. This libraries. is like a like component tester. I think it's not. I think it's an Arduino. I don't think it's a MicroPython, but it might yeah. be. But it's a, it's a little smartwatch. Um, this is a Python-powered um, Etch-a-Sketch camera that uses you snap a photo and then it draws it out with a Raspberry Pi and Python. Have some um, made with Moo news. Code with Moo. Made with Moo. Um, this is really neat. The next version. This is beta of Moo. Sneak preview. And I'm going to play Moo. a video. There is a web mode and you can make your own little websites. And one oh. of the things I'm really excited about is I think kids will probably be able to, once again, return to making their own websites. Because it, it was popular, and then it went away. And then it kind of came back. Because there's GeoCities. Sure. Angel Fire. Yeah. And that went away, and then people did MySpace. Yeah. That but that's went someone away. else's. It, it, but it was like, these are other now people's platforms. Yeah. And I think like being, being able to build your own website is an important thing. And so here's, here's a video that... Um, and told Nicholas made about this web version where you can make your own websites. Okay. So this is a very quick demonstration of a first draft of a web development mode in Mew. So let's just start Mew. Um, this is a uh, regular Mew. Uh, it's in Python 3 mode. Uh, if I click on the modes, though, we'll see that, hey, there's a new mode here. Um, so uh, what I can do is uh, load some code that I've already um, created earlier. Uh, this is the default code that you get when you create a new um, web application with this mode. Uh, how that happens is yet to be decided, but it's here already. Uh, I'm using the bottle 
web framework um, for Python. And essentially what you do is you have your web, um, web application definition of a route to an endpoint, which is just the home page here. And what does that do? Well, it renders a template called index. Um, and then the rest of it is general kind of housekeeping, really. Uh, if I want to actually serve web pages from my local machine, I click the run button. And the web server has started. And if I click the browse button, I get to see uh, the default page for a web application created with Mu. And it's at this point that learners start to work with templates or add new endpoints to their web application so that they can create a very simple dynamic web app. Um, so let's just uh, stop that. Um, of course, there are shortcuts to things like uh, where I've kept my templates. Um, where I keep my CSS, and of course the images that I might use. Oh, it's all gone mad. The images I might use um, in my web application. And so far, that's it. Um, but it's nice and simple, um, and it's coming soon. Okay, Edublox is doing some new branding. You can see the top logo and then the bottom logo, and they're putting in all sorts of things. Circuit Python is included with this, so do check out Edublox. Um, it's probably one of the uh, easiest ways to do Python in a block format, and you can switch back and forth between the two. Okay, PyCon's coming up. We're counting down the hours almost because it's May 1st to May 9th. Digikey and Adafruit are teaming up. We have these boards, and I've been showing a rendering of it forever, but, but they are here. They are here. We are about to program about 4,000 of these, and uh, here it is. It's real. Um, included on this is a bunch of cool stuff for the workshops demos, even some surprises, Freebook, yeah. and more. Um, the team will be there. Dan, Katni, Scott, Brent, Brian, Michelle, Melissa. Uh, Melissa. And I think I think I got to, I think I got everybody. Um, they'll be there. They'll do sprints, workshops, and more um, to check it out. Other things going on in the world of Python. Like I said, there's a lot of news this week. I know. Um, there's a call for proposals for PyCon Australia. Um, Check it out. The link is in the newsletter. If you haven't, sign up for the Python so Software Foundation newsletter. There's just a lot of interesting things about Python and how a foundation is run. So um, if you're like me and you keep an eye on things in the world of Python, um, they have a newsletter now, and there's no better source. And uh, it's hard to find stuff on the web. I kind of like newsletters now, personally. Um, help wanted. Um, we'll talk about our jobs board later, but we do have some help wanted things that we are looking for from people. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're always looking for we're, we're, yeah, cool we're, people. Yeah, we're looking for things right now. Yeah, what are we looking for? Well, one, um, I'll have some more information up, but get ready. If you like single board computing and Linux, we need more help testing to make sure that Blinka runs on it. So I'm going to have a special section of circuitpython.org. We'll have boards, and then we just need people to verify and make sure it works, and then we'll add them in. It's not even that hard. I made it pretty easy, but yeah. I just am not an expert at every single board computer. We did a couple, but there's like 50. Yeah, and, and Tux and Blink are getting along well, so you can yeah, best help keep that going on. Um, we also need help for translations of CircuitPython. If you speak another language, write another language, check out what languages we are reporting it to. Um, also on the code side, looking for sleep and power and battery optimizations, and then we're also looking for pinout diagrams. So we'll do a post, but if you're into all those things, let us know on Discord. Um, we keep track of all this in awesome CircuitPython. We have updates and more on circuitpython.org. We linked to and we render in awesome-circuitpython, which is on GitHub. It makes things easier to, to find. Markdown. And, and then this weekend, we added boards. There's over 53 boards right now. That's that right. Circuit Python. And they're not all Adafruit boards. There's actually no. a lot of boards. It's it's heading towards 25, 30% of them yep. are from the community. We're, com we're fine. Other companies. We're fine with there being more non Adafruit boards. Actually, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. I would love it if there was more totally boards fine. not from Adafruit because then it wouldn't be just on me to make cool new Circuit Python boards. Yeah. So, um, we're also not going to get to everything. For example, Space. We're not, we're not going to make a board that runs Circuit Python that goes to space. However, Max did. Yeah. And now Blink is in space. Um, this is a board. You can go to the overhead real quick. Yeah. Um, this is uh, one of the boards that we added, and uh, Max sent us one. Here it is. Cool. This goes to space. It's got like a tether wire. Yep. 
And if you want to have your board appear nicely in the circuitpythons.org site and have downloads automatically generated and all these rendered things and it's so beautiful mm. and wonderful, all you have to do is submit a pull request to CircuitPython. It's free. Uh, the code's all open source. Submit a pull request with your board definition and it'll automatically populate and you'll automatically get builds and you'll get the latest code for your, you'll get the latest builds for your board for every update, which is really great for you. You don't have to worry about compiling and keeping up to date. We'll do, do that for you. All right. And... Last but not least, um, we have a Circuit Python style guide for Blinka if people want to use the logo. We're cool with it. We just show you what's okay and what's not okay. That'll be up on the circuitpython.org site. It's also in the art Dropbox folder, and we'll have it in other places shortly. All that and more in the weekly newsletter, Whew. in case you missed it, the videos that we post, it is a Circuit Python world. We're just living, just in living it. it. Okay. Epic week. Woo! All right, um, mailbag. All right, these are the emails that people send us. We read these at State of the Fruit, our weekly meeting. And uh, for the most part, these are pretty good. This is an unusual one, because I'm going to say... Because I'm going to say, this, ain't, this wasn't the best... This was a very... This was one from a long time ago. Yeah. And because we have so many, sometimes ones from, like, years and years ago... Yeah. We, we just... We have a backlog, and sometimes we randomize them. So this is from a long time ago. So normally I would say, you know what? Like, I'm not going to read this off. But I thought it, it was an interesting glimpse of the past. Okay. All right. What is it? What is it about? This one's from Bill. I think you guys have the best learning guides out there for your products you sell. Fair prices, and I have to admit that the first time I seen Ask an Engineer, I thought it was some type of joke. But after watching the Lady Ada Death series, I have come to be quite a fan of the lady. Lamore, you're a very good engineer, and I have shamed of myself for thinking otherwise. Okay. Continue being yourself and stay true to it. Regards, Bill. And yeah. and I think that's kind of like the arc of the I Adafruit mean, story. It's kind of cool. People are like, you guys are a joke, right? <laughs> And then, and like, then, and then later they're like, "Oh wow, this is this is serious." Yeah, actually, doing engineering. <laughs> this is serious, and 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 Not one of the things stop. I'll just say this because I get the emails behind the scenes that sometimes you don't. Yeah. Is I think because there's so many internet personalities. People think you're playing a role and you're actually not doing the engineering and stuff. That'd be so great if I had like no <laughs> accountability or responsibility for the things that but, get shipped. But that's kind of what it is. And and so this is kind of neat because this is an older one that for email that came in a long time ago. And I thought that was neat because now it's not. It's not so unusual to see someone like you doing engineering, and and the more the more representation, the more people that can say, oh, like I see her, I, I can imagine myself being like her. The more people will see doing yeah. engineering. So I thought that that's the reason I'm, I, I I kept it in here for the show this week. Okay. Cool. You're not a joke. I'm not a joke. <laughs> here is uh, some cool. time travel. Um, there's some upcoming events. Yes. And this is in the future. Keycon is coming up. April 26th, 27th. We're a sponsor. Go to it. Check it out. Happy 30th anniversary to Game Boy. And the thing that I wanted to mention is uh, uh, Scott mentioned this talk, and I watched it like half of it, and then I fell asleep in the other half. And it wasn't because of the content. It was just because it was like 3 in the, the morning. The guy was very was calming, too. It's a really nice talk. It so. was a really good talk. And this talk, this was at CC... CC... 33C3. 33, and this is um, Michael Steele, Steel, and it's um, a really comprehensive talk called the Ultimate Game Boy Talk, and this is an it's entire like one series. hour about the hardware in the Game yeah. Boy, and it covers it like and there's close a, to tail. And there's like an Ultimate series, Ultimate Apollo Guidance, Ultimate whatever. These are really neat talks. They're good talks. Ultimate Commodore 64. And it's a, a well delivered and the animations are really helpful and I actually yeah. learned a lot about how the Game Boy structured and there's some f really funny cool hacks in the Game Boy. It is neat. And this also helped us as we're thinking about our gaming platform. Alright. Um, next up we have a video. We updated our sticker app for iOS. Uh, Trevor, iOS developer, um, did a video with us. Take it away, Trev. Adafruit now has stickers. Oh. Like, for my lunchbox? Uh, not exactly. It's for your iMessages. Oh, but where are they? Oh, well... Open iMessages, tap the App Store icon, search for Adafruit, and download. It's free. Then, whenever you need to spice up your text, open up Adafruit stickers, drag, and drop. Hey, nice icon. Yeah, and it's not just you in there. There's Blinka, Minerva, and Hans, and the rest of the Sticker Playground crew. Whoa, that's a lot of stickers. It is.
All right, help wanted, our Adafruit jobs board. We have, um, I think it's the best free jobs board for makers or makers, for companies, companies looking for cool makers. Volunteers, yeah. paid, everything. Yeah, and uh, every no single, spam. no spam, every single one of them we review to make sure it's not spammy or weird. And I, I've had to explain what our jobs board is so many times um, that uh, I'm, I'm good at it, I'm fine, I'm, I'm okay. But, you know. But, but it would be great to just send a video. That's right. So we made a video. So here's a video all about the Adafruit Jobs Board. Take it away, Jesse May. Thanks, Jesse May. The Adafruit community is full of skilled designers, makers, programmers, and engineers who are looking for great places to work and projects to work on. That's why we created the Adafruit Jobs Board. The Adafruit Jobs Board is a free service provided by Adafruit to help connect companies and people with the talented folks in the Adafruit community. It's both for companies and people looking to hire, as well as makers who want to post their skills to get a gig. To use the Adafruit Jobs Board, sign into your Adafruit account. For help creating an account, check out our How to Create an Adafruit Account video linked below. Once you're signed in, click on Jobs at the bottom of the Adafruit homepage or navigate to it directly by going to jobs.adafruit.com. This will direct you to the Adafruit Jobs Board where you can view, post, or reply to all listings. If you are a company and would like to post a job listing, first you'll need to create a company profile. Click the company profile option and fill out the prompts. Once you've completed a profile, you can post a job. You can manage all of your listings, applications, profile settings, and membership settings on your handy employer dashboard. If you are seeking employment opportunities, we recommend uploading your resume and completing your skills and experience in the My Skills Offered section. Please follow the prompts to add any relevant information. After you've set up your profile, start your job search by clicking View Jobs. You can sort the positions by type of employment contract, freelance, full-time, internship, part-time, remote, and or volunteer jobs. You can also do a keyword search or sort available jobs by location. To reply to a job, simply click on the listing. There you can read more about the job. Please read through the description carefully. If it sounds like a good fit, then you have two options. You can bookmark the listing and apply at a later date, you can view all your bookmarked listings by clicking on the My Bookmarks tab or by navigating to the My Dashboard button. Or you can apply to the job right away. Submit your application through the site by clicking Apply Online at the bottom of the listing. The application will be sent directly to the company who created the listing. They will review your application and take it from there. Even if you're not on the hunt for a new gig or looking to hire, the Adafruit Jobs Board is a fun way to keep tabs on the job market in the Adafruit community and the maker community at large. It's open and free to all account holders, so feel free to stop by. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more community support videos from Adafruit. All right, thank you, Jesse May. All right, Lead Data, we're an open source hardware company. We are, and I'm member of the Open Source Hardware Association. Too. Yeah, you just renewed your membership. Um, we have guides. We have guides, we have a lot of guides. We have two weeks worth of guides. We have them really fast. Um, yeah. Starting from the bottom, I can't actually, can't see, do you mind? Do you want to zoom in on these? Can you zoom know? in a little bit, yeah. yeah. We have so many guides this week. I actually can't see the little, okay. So we've got Aaron's light up uh, power dragon wall sconce using an, uh, it's a paper mache dragon with neopixel spines and it uses an ostrich egg, which is super cool. Known Pedro yeah, made. we will play that after we're done going through these. Yeah, after we go through them, we'll okay. just watch all the videos. Uh, Known Pedro uh, did an e-ink stand for our e-ink feather wing. Um, this is a little cut stand. You can put a feather onto it and it's just got the holes in the right location. Uh, JP did a couple uh, Pi Portal image projects because we've got image downloading and viewing. So uh, Pi Portal NASA image of the day, it's pretty cool. It shows you the latest NASA image of the day and then it tells you what the image is. There's a caption as well. He also did the Cute Fuzz image viewer. So there's a couple services that uh, provide uh, cute fuzzy dogs, cute fuzzy foxes, or cute fuzzy kittens. And um, you can have it display a new one every hour. When you touch it, it'll give you a new uh, cute fuzzy. Um, we also have from him the Pi Portal new, new, new product viewer. It'll display every few minutes 
uh, one of the latest uh, 30 new products from the Adafruit shop. So if you want to see what's new from Adafruit, you like the new, uh, it will display it. And also maybe you'll get alerted uh, when new items appear before uh, the email goes out. So you can get first dibs. Um, also a Pi Portal Thingiverse viewer, similar. It'll show you um, the random, one of random 30 um, Thingiverse projects from a particular viewer. You can customize it to be the last uh, few items uploaded and it'll show you the image, the Thingiverse ID and the caption as well. So a couple projects showing you how to download images over JSON, convert them over to bitmap, display them, and then maybe have a caption. Um, you got the beautiful display of the Pi Portal, why not use it? Uh, Nan Pedro also made a prop maker keyblade. I think we did show the video in the last video, uh, in the last show, but it's a prop maker wing keyblade from Kingdom Hearts, kind of like a stylized keyblade. Uh, we'll show a little video. We've also got the. Yeah, we're showing that video this week. We'll show the video. Yeah. We've got the Adafruit Airlift. Uh, this is a breakout with the ESP32 Wi Fi co processor that we had on the Pi Portal. Um, this is code from Arduino that's really cool. It's called the Nina firmware. And it turns an ESP32 into a Wi-Fi coprocessor over SPI. You can clock it at eight megahertz, so you can actually transfer quite a bit of data quite fast. But what's nice is it handles all the security, all the TLS root certificates, the encryption, handshaking, all for you. So even if you have something as simple as a Metro 328 or 32U4, um, you can connect to secure internet sites uh, with this coprocessor, and it's very easy and transparent and works uh, with the socket libraries that people expect on Arduino. Uh, Brent made a Pi Portal Lifix lighting controller. Um, Lifix bulbs are little Wi-Fi bulbs that you can um, send Wi-Fi JSON commands and the Pi Portal's great at them. So this is a little uh, controller. You can see these buttons that when you press them, you can change the color of all your bulbs. And there's a couple, you know, the interface is kind of basic, but you can of course take it uh, beyond to create custom, you know, animations or whatnot. Uh, Dan Wall did a drama pinata. We, we picked up one of these pinatas from uh, uh, Fortnite, and uh, we made it a smart pinata. Um, so it's recyclable, reusable. When you hit it, the Circuit Playground detects this, the smacks, and after at least three smacks, it'll wait a random number, yeah. and then it'll open up, and all the candy will pop out. You can so, also make it so it pleads with you not to hit it, but then you're still going to hit it and eat the candy anyways. I know, this llama is yeah. a little horrified look, full of loot. Um, we've got from Liz Clark uh, a Twin Peaks light reactive picture frame. Um, I'm not a Twin Peaks fan, so I t don't completely understand this, but it uses the light sensor to switch from, I guess, Laura Palmer to one of looks like the bad guys. I well, Twin Peaks fans clearly, are clearly clearly this goes from everything's working out to things didn't things work didn't out. Things didn't work out, but it uses the light sensor to know when to to yeah. switch between the two. Um, you got the new viewer, the Robotic Creatures video, which we'll show from another page. This is a really cool Cricut project with uh, magnetic filament and uh, UV filament uh, combined together to make these um, robotic animals that move around. A very cool project. And we've got a couple different animals. You can use like fish or octopus or oct octopodes or uh, starfish. Um, we also got the Pi Portal Tide Viewer. This is an epic project from Carter, uh, which is also the first project showing how to graph data on the Pi Portal, which is pretty cool. He's been writing a lot of, uh, he's writing a guide about how to use uh, display yeah, so this maybe with practice, but he can plot uh, the tides by grabbing the data from NOAA, um, not NOAA person, but NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, I don't, agency, I don't know exactly, but uh, weather data from the US government and you can display the high, low tides or graph the tides as well. So if you're a surfer, uh, kiteboarder, or just somebody you like going to the beach, uh, maybe you live near the water, could be very handy to know when the tides are. Davis Stelz uh, is learning calligraphy. Uh, and so uh, having a light box is essential for practicing your calligraphy. Uh, so we made one, it's Bluetooth controlled with NeoPixels inside of it. It's fully 3D printed. It's a pretty cool light box and then you can change the color. Um, it should, could be useful depending on what you're tracing. Uh, Colin went back and we had accidentally skipped one of the uh, Circuit Playground video guides, so he got that done, the G is for ground guide. Uh, so now we have them all. So uh, we were missing yeah. one, but now we're not. And um, last but not least, Katni did a guide on an older product, the AD8495 analog thermal couple sensor. We never wrote up a guide for it, so she wrote one up for Arduino and CircuitPython. Okay. Does a lot of guides. I feel accomplished. Okie dokie. 
Well, um, let's play the dragon video. Okay. Good idea. Okie dokie, and then we have some Adafruit I.O. updates. Um, this is the I.O. Plus plan upgrades, and okay. these are the things that you can do. Um, one of the features that we've been asked since we launched and we have the pro account is way for to add, uh, to raise the I.O. Plus accounts limits even further. So people are using even more than just what we made available with the Plus accounts. So you can upgrade lots of different things. The data rate can be boosted to 10 points per minute increments for $2 a month or $24 a year. Data storage can be boosted in 30-day increments for $5 per month or $60 per year. And if you want to double your data rates, we have all of the different parts that you can go in. And you just pay for what you use. If you need data rates, great. If you right. need data storage, great. We're not, you know, it's like so, you can just boost whatever you need. Yeah, so we call these boosts for the people that are they're really maxing out IoT. And because we play nice with every device, this is why a lot of people are using a lot of different ways. And some people are like running entire, you know, business-like things on this before they maybe deploy to even um, bigger services. But uh, we added more because people want to do more. So that's our IO news. Nice. Next up, Adabox. Um, yeah, last week was our, this is why this show is going to go later this week because last week was Adabox unboxing. This year, week we're catching up on stuff and um, we wanted to have all, all this content that came in. Yeah. Um, so one thing just to know is we have, there's a physical limit of how fast we can ship thousands of thousands of boxes. So we have to say, here's how many thousands we can do. And that's it. And that's it. Like they don't magically grow on yeah. trees. Like we have to order all the parts many months in advance. Yeah, this is years in the planning now as, yeah. as we do through, Ada, as we go through Ada boxes. So the other thing is people really like their Ada boxes and they're not, they're not stopping Ada boxes. They'll renew year after year. Yeah. So the number of slots is starting to get smaller. We're gonna keep increasing the number we do, but more people are getting Adabox, so. And we're opening up for more countries and more yeah. places so and more people. Well, it's always a surprise. We'll say, you know, Pi Portal was really successful and it was, it was out, fun it was and we had lots stock, of projects and, and that's that. we don't have any right now because we yeah. sold them all. So let's say you like, you like gaming. This is an Adabox for you, so subscribe if you want it because the things that are gonna be in are probably gonna be hard to find for a bit. And That's what I'm saying about it. We are we have fewer slots than ever. Like yeah. the number of slots has gone down, so we will run out again. We'll absolutely not be able to yeah. have extra slots near the end of and we ship in mid June. So you have like a week or two to sign it's, up, it's and then it really is not guaranteed. Like we're watching because we we have a pie portal which we can plot the data, and we're seeing the number go down. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Main New York City factory footage. Take it away, in Fruit Factory.
and it wouldn't be a Made in New York City factory footage segment without a time lapse of what the picking places see when they wake up or fall asleep to at night. Okay, this week is two weeks of 3D printing video. So this week we're going to do the Keyblade video and the robotic aquatic video. Friend, yeah. Then we're then. going to do two speed ups. Okay, so we're... So buckle up. Everybody always says, I wish this show was longer. Guess what? This week it is. You, you, you got your wish. So here we go. Okay. Keyblades are sword-like weapons featured in the Kingdom Hearts video game series. In this project, we'll make a custom keyblade with lights and sounds. Featuring Adafruit's prop maker Featherwing, NeoPixels light up when you swing it around. It also plays different sound effects depending on how you swing it. We designed and 3D printed the parts so the assembly snap fits together. Parts like the tubing and handle have screw threaded ends so they're easier to connect. The electronics are also easy to get to so we can recharge the battery or update the code. The blade can be detached so it's ready for transporting or putting it away for storage. The modular design makes it so we can swap out the parts if we need to. Most of the electronics use Quick Connect, so it's very much a plug and play circuit. This makes installing the components much easier. You can get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. PropMaker Featherwing has everything you need to add motion activated lights and sounds. With the Feather Express, you can program with CircuitPython. This means you can store files in your code like a USB drive so you can make quick changes to your code. Get started with our example code and check out the Moo editor for Python. I designed the Keyblade in Fusion 360 and built the assembly around the electronics. We've made the CAD files available, so feel free to download and 3D print them. Several parts are dual extruded with transparent PLA. This diffuses the LEDs and illuminates features like the blade and various panels. To build this project, check out our guide for a full step-by-step -step tutorial. You can learn how to wire up the electronics, and be sure to check out all the awesome projects on the Adafruit Learn site. The NeoPixel ring is press fitted into a cover that gets installed in the canister. A speaker is housed in a retainer and snap fits on top. The blade assembly locks onto a coupler that gets screwed into the tubing. The pipe extension and handle are then installed by screwing them together. I think the prop maker featherwing is a great piece of kit. This makes building props with interactive lights and sounds much easier. It's got lots of nifty features, so be sure to check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. Watch as these seemingly lifeless creatures spring to life in this mysterious glowing jar. In this project, we're making animatronic sea critters with Cricut, Adafruit's robotics platform. Using just magnets and a DC motor, you can add a little bit of movement to these print-in-place models. The enclosure houses the electronics and the models are printed in magnetic PLA. We turned this into a platform with two fish critters for a game of Last Fish Standing. Adafruit's Cricut and Circuit Playground Express has everything you need to build a project with lights, sound, and motor control. You can get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. This special blend of PLA by Protopasta features iron particles giving this magnetic attraction. It's an easy material to experiment with, just use regular PLA settings with your 3D printer. We dual extruded the octopus with a UV fluorescent PLA. This gives the parts a nice effect under black lights. These print-in-place models are an excellent use of mechanical hinges. You can download the STL files, links are in the description. Use Microsoft's MayCode to program the Cricut using drag and drop code blocks. It's easy to add interactive lights and sounds using the sensors on board the Circuit Playground Express. Install the hardware using the bolt kit for the Circuit Playground. A 3D printed bracket is secured to the mounting holes with machine screws. 
screw block terminals make it easy to connect components like the motor and an LED strip. A 3D printed holder for the motor is installed and secured on top. This DC motor and a micro server body press fits into the holder. You can use jumper cables to extend the connections. A 3D printed server arm will house the two powerful neodymium magnets. Be careful handling these. We used hot glue to secure them to the ends. The Cricut PCB is then secured to the enclosure. A NeoPixel strip fits inside. This one features UV LEDs. A USB extension cable is panel mounted to the enclosure for easy access to power. The cover snap fits over the enclosure and is also printed in UV fluorescent PLA. We think this would be great for Halloween projects, maybe inside a fun house or escape room. It's easy to change up the critters and experiment with different hinged models. The effect is mesmerizing and has a creepy factor when it's taken on and off the platform. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. Okay, and don't forget every single week if you want to learn how to make all these things, tune into 3D Hangouts with Nora Pedro. All right, Lady Ada, before we get off to the Ooh, new products, we should so probably mention. New. Yeah, there's a lot of new stuff this week. Um, gonna mention Code Academy. It's code. Celebrating Code Academy and Circle Python together. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm right. just nude. I'm nude. Okay. No. Okay. Let's uh let's do this, ready? Okay. We have a lot of news. Okay. So um we don't have a ton of headers, but we can uh the Grand Central still has stock, but we can get you a Grand Central without headers, which I've been meaning to put in stock anyways. Like, this is a perfect excuse to get in while we're waiting for uh those big headers to show up. So this is a skinny Grand Central, it kinda has a purplish PCB. Uh it's gonna be more purplish soon. Um but I thought I'd show this to you on the overhead. So if you were like, oh, I want a very thin board. It's a Grand Central, has that SAMD51. Now we know you can overclock it to 200 megahertz. Um, we give you a DC jack, but we don't solder it in. I figured you might want this, but it is really chunky, so we left it off. And then you can solder wires to it uh, if you like. And uh, it's basically a Grand Central. It works just the same, but doesn't have the headers installed. You can get bumpers, though. And it's less expensive because, of course, the headers aren't included. So uh, if you wanted a Grand Central and uh, headers aren't needed, pick one up. All right. 
Okay, we got a rainbow of thermochromic inks. These are really neat. Um, you've seen these on like t-shirts and mugs and stuff. These are inks that at uh, 31 degrees C or like 88 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, um, they turn from a color to a clear or white color. And um, I would like to show you all the different colors that we have because we got seven different colors. I didn't get yeah. every possible color, but I got the most popular ones. So, we have it on the site so you can pick. You can get it as a rainbow pack. Yeah, we get a rainbow pack as well. We get one of each color. Pink, red, orange, yellow, green, uh, blue, and black. Yeah. And here is... They come in packets of 10 grams. And it's just the pigment. So you can mix this with wax or resin or oils or water. You know, whatever you can put this pigment in you like. You can make paint out of it. Um, we made some basic, simple watercolor paints. We just uh, absorbed it, you know, dissolved it in some water and painted it on. And I can also show you, uh, it's, it, it changes color at a very low temperature. So, you know, if you put your hand on it and I'm kind of warm, I'm not very warm, hold on. Let's see if I can get it to change. It's a little cold in here, hold on. I can breathe on it, so I'm still alive. And um, my, even though my hands are cold, um, my breath is warm enough. Let's see if my hand. Do you want to try? Oh okay. yeah, you're much warmer. So okay. yeah, if um, if you have something that's 88 degrees uh, or 31 degrees C, it'll uh, change the temperature. And yeah, it comes in these pigments, which uh, are the bag is reusable. But you know, once you open it, of course, the pigments kind of get everywhere. And same deal, you know, you've got this pigment, and when it gets warm, it turns a light color and eventually white. It's in a bag, so it's going to be a little bit more insulated. Um, but they have a couple different colors. Uh, pick which ones you like. And uh, if you want to heat it up, we have heating pads. We also have um, some electronic controlled fabric that you can heat up, like a you know, resistive fabric. And you can use that to heat it up as well. I think we actually have a project that maybe Sophie did a bit ago with these inks. Um, these are super fun. So okay. try them out. Uh, we also got this LED ring. It's kind of simple, but I kind of like the look of it. Um, probably made for a project or product, and, and the company was like, hey, we have all these LED rings left over. Do you want any? Um, it uses through-hole NeoPixels, so it's still NeoPixel compatible, but there's these like kind of chunky little through-hole NeoPixels, and they have a neat diffused look, which is different than most of our rings. So um, you can see they stick out, but they have kind of like a softer dotted look. It also doesn't freak the camera out as much. <laughs> yeah, because it's diffused. So if you do a live engineering show you might want to get this right? yeah it's <laughs> not nearly as bright and you get i don't remember how many well obviously four here and i don't remember how many on the other rings but it's in the product page you just start at the bottom and then you know the out you can string to another one that's kind of a neat looking ring so i thought we'd pick up a couple okay next up okay next up we have an e-ink friend so we have all these e-ink panels and i actually i actually designed this for myself I'm doing so much e-ink experimentation, I needed something that would let me quickly, quickly connect to 24-pin e-ink displays, which is a kind of a common standard. Almost all the e-ink uh, display makers have stuck to this one standard. Plug it in, and you can wire it up to your microcontroller. Uh, it has level shifting in it, so you can use it with 3-volt or 5-volt microcontrollers. It has the boost converter stuff in it, and it also has SRAM. And we put uh, 256 kilobits of SRAM on there, so you can control up to 4.2-inch displays. If you do the math, these need basically 256 kilobits. I like products that you make because you're making so many products. That I'm like, I need a product for yeah, this Yeah, that you need a product to make the products. I like those. So this is like a Feather 32U4. So it's not actually got enough memory to buffer this entire image. But because... Um, actually don't there's, know a it screen, there's a screen protector on this in case someone asks. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, it's just to protect They're it. They're actually not bubbly. But I can, I can peel it off. Um, yeah. But you can see it, it you know, reads from the SD card. And updates this gigantic 400 by 300 display. Uh, it's a big display. display. And hold on, I, I will peel this off because it's a little shiny. And um, so you can drive up to 4.2 inch ink displays. You don't have to use the SRAM, but what's nice is that even chips with very low memory can drive very large displays. And because ink updates slow, it doesn't matter that you have this extra chip in, you know, in between. Uh, and it just buffers it and use it with our GFX library since it's just, just drawing a bitmap, or you can draw text or lines or whatever UI elements you would like. Okay, next up. I'm going to put this back to protect it. Likewise, uh, let's say you want to have an e-ink shield. You have an Arduino shape board and you want to 
have this is ink. Crazy. Right? Oh no, there's like thermochromic ink anywhere, everywhere. And then where did my ink shield go? I don't know. Uh oh, hold on. I got Shoot. photos of I it. I think I left it on my desk. But um Yeah. I can talk about it here. Talk about it. I'll go look for it on your desk. So it's a 2.7 inch tricolor ink display and it's a fully assembled shield and uh, you can plug it onto your Arduino shade board. It uses uh, SPI plus a couple of other GPIO pins, uh, like three or four. And uh, as a bonus, I asked Phil, should I put some buttons on the front? And he said, yes. Yeah, put some buttons so on. So I put some buttons on the front. So on the front, you get five buttons total, four um, GPIO buttons labeled A, B, C, D. This is not plugged in, so I'm not doing anything. And then a reset button. Um, there's an SD card slot as well, and it uses the SPI port, so it works with any Arduino compatible board, and, and you know it's a, it's pretty easy. Um, you can display uh, your tricolor e ink image on there, and of course it has the SRAM as well. So even on a 32U4 or 328, you'll be able to um, display um, large images without having to worry about running out of memory. And then all the buttons, uh, these four buttons are connected to one analog pin. Because again, it's, it displays slow. You can't do fast updates. So you can read one button at a time and you know, have it display different uh, images or maybe it connects to the internet and grabs something and displays it. Um, so a nice little add-on shield for your Arduino compatible. It's a little bit bigger than an Arduino to fit the shield, but uh, I don't know, I like it. It's like uh, actually one of the first ink shields I've seen. Next up. This little boy, this is a 74HCT14. Uh, some people have had projects where they're like, oh, I have a high level and I want a low level. And I'm like, well, you could use a transistor. And they're like, I don't really want to use a transistor. This is a, uh, a level shifter slash inverter. You put high level in, it gives you low level out. You put low level in, you get high level out. You get six inverters. Uh, it's spec for five volts, but honestly, you can run it down to three volts. And what's nice is that you can use uh, almost any low, uh, logic level in and because uh, it's transistor level and it will shift it um, up to your logic level out. So uh, yeah, it's spec for five, but you can use it at three. It's fine. And uh, it's an inverter. Works great. Breadboard friendly. Okay. Invert. Next up. Uh, another panel mount cable. This time it's a snap in USB panel mount cable. Um, you have USB A on the end, USB socket on the other end. And what's nice about this is it's, it's a rectangular cutout snap in. So if you don't want, we have other panel mounts, but you have to screw them in. This is nice. You just cut, if you can laser cut or drill out and then and then file out a rectangular hole, the, the size of the holes in the specs, I don't remember it offhand. Um, it snaps in very nicely, and there's even a little bezel, so it kind of covers up the hole. Um, I can show this off on the overhead. So we have this piece of acrylic. But... Uh, very easy to use. You know, you've got these snaps, pulls out, and then snaps in, and it covers the hole very nicely. And this is translucent, as you can see. It comes out the other end. Very easy to use panel mount cable. Uh, people love panel mount cables. It's, a, it's one of the things that really makes a project stand out. So uh, this is an extension. So great for if you have USB host on one end, you know, any computer, or single board computer or something, and then you want to plug in a USB stick or Wi-Fi or what have you. Ah, nuts. These are some nuts. These are SMT standoff nuts. Uh, these are really cool. I'm using them in an upcoming project. And I thought I'd uh, throw them in the store as a pack of 10. Um, we have three millimeter and six millimeter. Actually, let me grab my uh, circuit breaker. I'll be right back. All right. Well, I'm just going to show photos of these yeah. things. Actually, this is what they're going to be for later, but uh, we'll talk about that. That's not out yet. Yeah, somehow we had like a five-minute long 3D printing break, but I forgot to grab this. Yeah. So uh, if you go to the overhead, I'll show you. So what you do is you have a PCB, and you um, put in, uh, I think it's it's more, it's more an M3 standoff, so I think you need like a four-millimeter, four-and-a-half-millimeter uh, hole, and you have uh, an annular ring around it. And then when you paste it, these are come on a pick and place reel, but these of course are sold loose, but you would put some paste or solder on it. And then you can solder these in place. And they're basically, you know, standoffs that are like permanently attached to the PCB. So one, for the price, it's like you get a standoff and a hex nut and like you don't have to worry about assembly because it's like pre-assembled and it's solid. So you don't have the annoyance of like you're twisting it and like the hex nut's twisting. And you're like, how do I keep it? Uh, this is firmly attached to the PCB. So you can mechanically mount something quite easily. Um, 
so this I never is like, saw these before. This is a really good idea. Yeah, it's a really. It's you know, it's funny. I got these samples. They actually, originally, I got these for the cricket. I thought the cricket was going to use these, but I couldn't get them tall enough. So that's why this cricket used standoffs. Because I try, I ordered yeah, these yeah, yeah. when we first did the cricket about a year ago, and then they were sitting in my sample bin. But then when I got to doing the gizmo, I was like, oh wait, you know, this is a perfect time to get these out of stock and and maybe put them in. So this is actually showing the shorter ones. And then we have the longer ones as well. But basically you only need um, screws on the other end and the other, the, the side that doesn't have the standoff is totally flush. Which is another nice thing. I didn't want to have anything sticking out on this side. I want it to be flat um, because it would get in the way of the screen. So this is a very flush, extremely strong mechanical and electrical connection. So we have them and this is a three millimeter and you can tell it's actually not quite long enough because you see it's, it's binding on the uh, JSTs but then you know you could update it to the six millimeter, it's much taller. So we have two lengths right now, both M3, and then you could use any M3 screw to attach it in. And I'm going with metric because I've, I found that even though I grew up with Imperial, it's just easier to get all these parts in metric. Okay. And then the start of the show tonight besides you, the data, the data for your community, and all the people that are watching is Code Academy. Yes, we have the Code Academy for Circuit Python. Well, first off, when you get it, it's not just the Code Academy Circuit Python course. You actually get a full pro membership for a month, and it's like 50% off. Um, it's only like 20 bucks. Usually, I think it's 30 or, or more. And uh, it doesn't come with hardware, but it's your first trial. It's basically if you've never signed up for Code Academy before, yeah. um, they've got like hundreds and hundreds of uh, courses and tests and quizzes and guides on all sorts of languages, including Python. Um, but also C, C++, and JavaScript, and multiple other languages. Um, so you can learn how to code. And the pro account gives you access to like pretty much everything they make. So you can go around and experiment and for one month learn and be tutored on any kind of programming language you could ever want to learn. And there's lots of folks that are already Code Academy um, community members. They're one of the 45 million people that have uh, learned how to code and get uh, more career opportunities, and this person right away, she said, it's like my dreams come true. Can't wait to try out this course. So um, we're really excited about this, and we also, um, we have a Circuit Playground video with you and Adabot that I'm gonna play This is part of this, and it says, here's all the different ways you can code with Circuit Python, and now mm -hmm. Code Academy is part of it. So take it away, Adabot and Lady Ada. Yay, pass me. Hey, Lady Ada, what are you up to? Oh, hey, Adabot. I was just programming my circuit playground. Playground? That sounds like fun. What can you do with it? You can do a lot with a circuit playground, like detect motion, measure temperature, Brr, that is cold. sense light, touch, and sound too. Hello! La 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 It even has a buzzer built in. Wow, Circuit Playground can do lots of interesting things. Yep, and the best part is you can combine all of these abilities to make really cool projects. Like what kind of projects? Like a tilt sensor. Detect a heartbeat. A musical instrument or even interactive games. I won! And those are just a few examples. Get creative and you can make pretty much anything you imagine. Excellent. So how do you tell Circuit Playground what to do? Easy. First, you write your code. Then you upload that code to your Circuit Playground. You can choose how you want to write and upload the code. Circuit Playground works with Circuit Python on Code Academy. This is awesome. I'm going to go get started on my first project. Thanks. Hey, I was using that. Oh, can't wait for this recap. <laughs> yeah. You have some recapping to do. I know. Ready? Recap, recap, recap. New, 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 new. We have 
A Skinny Grand Central's Grand Central is a Sam 51 uh, 128 pin TQFP, but it doesn't have the headers. So it's slimmer and it's less expensive. Uh, it might be a good use for your build, just solder directly to the pins. Uh, we have Thermochromic inks in seven colors. Uh, it comes in pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and black. And when the temperature of whatever the pigment is inside, uh, you know, water, oil, sugru, wax, whatever, uh, changes from 31 degrees centigrade, 88 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, it turns white. So it's a color changing pigment that you can mix into any kind of medium. We have these kind of cute NeoPixel rings. It's three rings in one, and then it's got these like five millimeter LEDs. It's NeoPixel compatible. It kind of looks cool. I thought I'd pick some up and suck them in the shop. The e ink friend uh, is a little board I made for myself, but I decided to put in the store. It's a level shifter plus SRAM. Uh, frame buffer for any e-ink display with a 24 pin FPC, which is like pretty much all of them. And it has enough SRAM to buffer up to a tri-color 4.2 inch display. So very handy if you're playing around with uh, the plethora of available e-ink displays that are coming onto the market. Maybe you have an Arduino shape board and you want to add e-ink there. Well, we have a 2.7 inch e-ink shield also has an SRAM buffer. So you can use it with any board, no matter how much memory it has. And you can use it with displaying graphics, text, whatever. And it has uh, four user buttons on the front and one reset button, um, so you can make a little user interface. The 74HC14 is a simple but effective six-channel inverter. I, it's spec for five volts, but I use it down to three, no problem, and it will level shift as well. So good for when you want high and it's got low, or you have low and you want high. This snap-in panel mount USB cable takes a USB-A connection and gives you a socket on the other end. And extra nice, you don't have drilling holes. Uh, if you can cut a rectangular slot in your uh, enclosure, you snap it right in. These SMT threaded standoffs are really neat. Um, if you have a PCB, uh, you can uh, put a hole with an annular ring and paste it. And then you can place this on top and solder it and it becomes a strong mechanical threaded standoff that is permanently attached to your PCB. Uh, so it makes your mechanical enclosure design a lot easier because you're not dealing with standoffs. And also um, you get a, a flat smooth, um, uh, you, you have a flat smooth connection on the other side of the board because you don't have to have a uh, uh, machine screw on the other side holding it in place. And of course, star of the show tonight is the Code Academy Circuit Python, uh, uh, one month pro membership available on Adafruit.com. If you've never been a Code Academy pro member, uh, this is a great time to sign up. You can get up to 50% off, and uh, it's a great deal for a one month free pro membership. Sorry, one month pro membership that you can then renew uh, at the regular rate. But you get access to the new Circuit Python course as well as the hundreds of other courses, quizzes and guides that Code Academy has it's taught millions of people how to code and we're psyched to have them show people how to make uh, and code with CircuitPython. That's news. News, news, news. Okay, um, we're gonna do some top secret and then we're gonna answer some questions. Yeah. So uh, first up, don't forget everything you saw that is unsaleable. <laughs> code Academy is the code 10% off and native fruits are all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Um, top secret from the Adafruit vault. Things that are not out yet. Now, the first one I'm going to do, and we announced it, so it is not such a secret, but we were able to use the 4-H logo we applied to the USDA. We have a permission from stuff. the government. We have, it's a very special, weird type of trademark. Took about a year to get, and uh, we're now making these boards. They were coming soon before, and this is a comment that I think people are going to see and hear about a lot. 4-H and Adafruit together? Awesome. How did this happen? I've led a 4-H group for 10 years and I've always put electronics. I never thought the two would meet. Exactly. They to, should meet. This they is, should hang out. To us, this is the most obvious thing and this is why like, we didn't want to give up because it took forever to get everything perfect because this is such a special, rare trademark that they allow people to use. Now we have a Circuit Playground Edition. So we're making those right now as we it's speak. It's happening. Next up, Air Life. Air lift, Our, light. The air life, lift, lift, life, life. Well, the silk key came out light. really nice. I yeah. want to show it to you because it came out. They did a really good light. job with it. Air lift, light. It. Say five, five. Air lift, light. Air lift, light. Okay. And then next up is the Metro NRF 52840. 
express. Yes, it's time for the next generation of run, chips. You could run this on that. This could be Internet of Things 20.7 inch ink. ink. It could be on this chip. if That's you want to. Nice. And this is just purple because we want to just, this is a prototype. It's nice purple. You can see there's a blue wire because okay. I made a mistake. And then uh, we were talking about those um, surf belt things. Well, this is the TFT the gizmo. gizmo. Yes, this is how could you attach them to the circuit playground? Well, these SMT uh, threaded standoffs are great. Phil be coming in strong with the silk art. I know. Loving it. Okay. And that's... Some artist paint, some use pixels in... Illustrator. Illustrator. Okay. okay. Um, we're going to answer your questions. Go to adafruit.it slash discord. Do it now. Do it now. And uh, we're going to answer questions. We're going to do a giveaway. And like I said, we're doing a later show here. Yeah. Um, someone wanted to know, was one of the products unidirectional? But I didn't know which one they were talking about. Was which it, one is was it Was it the USB panel mount thing? Or was, can this, was, maybe it was... Um, I don't know. Is this something that... That's could? unidirectional, yeah. Okay, that was shifter. what, yeah. I assume that it was either the cable or this. I'm just like, yeah. I don't know. You're That's mm-hmm. funny. Okay. All right. Yes, so, about everything eventually. Um, um, some folks are saying the video is better than usual. That's well, great. you know, we clean up. We take a shower. I know. Uh, looking, good. Um, okay. looking, looking good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 4-H is awesome. Totally inclusive. Wide range of programs accommodating interest. Yeah. Um, any NRF support? Ant plus... In Arduino land. I think Ant isn't available under a, under non-disclosure, so I don't think there's any Ant implementations, and okay. I don't know that there can be. I would like to know the difference between the Huzzah 32 breakout and the Airlift ESP32. They both seem to be using the same chip, if they're the same chip. I don't see the Bluetooth capabilities drive inside Airlift. Thanks. Oh, the reason is because Airlift, the library, doesn't have Bluetooth support quite yet, and so like the chip has Bluetooth support, but we have like, no way of like using that with Airlift. Um, the Airlift breakout is kind of specifically designed for people who want to add Wi-Fi capability, whereas the ESP32 breakout, it's kind of like, oh, I have an ESP32 and I want to program it with my own code and it can be kind of anything you like. It's more general purpose, and so it's got a lot more pins, and it doesn't have like the level shifter. It's not as specialized as the airlift. Um, so if you want to write your own code for that board, use the breakout. If you want to use it just as a Wi-Fi coprocessor, the airlift is much easier to use. Okay, should a Gemma M0 have 47 kilobyte of storage when running CircuitPython? Yes. Okay. Is there any way to power a Pi Portal without adding any other boards with a 3.7 volt or 3.8 volt LiPo? It's not designed for it, no. It's really meant to run off a 5 volt USB. You, you need it for all the stuff on there. Okay. If you didn't want to use a board, what would you use? A power boost? Yeah, power boost is great. We have a couple of projects showing how to use it. Okay. Uh, let me see if there are other ones here. Um, is your apartment disaster resolved? You guys, you guys no. seem more arrested. No, but... But it's um, gotten better. So at some point, things can't get worse. I think people say things can always get worse. Actually, th- sometimes you actually hit, like, terminal can't get worse velocity. Yeah. It's just like you're on fire and you're falling and you're sinking. Like, it's okay. Yeah. So we, um, we've just been, like, living the, the raccoon garbage creature life. Yeah. No, our stuff is all <laughs> still in piles. Yeah, it does look like we returned from Burning Man because everything it's is covered, covered in, in dust. dust now. Yeah, mm. it's a thin layer of dust on absolutely yeah. everything. Okay. Um, next up, what are the pads for next to the reset on the Pi Portal? Um, those pads are uh, SWD pads are for debugging. Do you own a spectrum analyzer? If so, I do which not. one? Okay. Okay, and I think that is. I guess it. I'm going to give another second. Yeah. That's it. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, what do you want to give, give away tonight? Uh, let's see. What do we have going on here? Let's give away a... Uh, do you want to give away Grand Central? Grand Central, yeah. Let's give away Grand Central. Let's give away a Grand Central without headers. What are the, what are the rules? Rules are if you've won something before from the show, you can't win again. Only one winner per my, for, from, per my lifetime. Uh, to win, you have to call the phone number when it appears and uh, call that number. And I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to say, ahoy, ahoy, so that you know it's me. And you can say, ahoy, ahoy, back. And that's kind of cute. And then I'm going to ask you your name and uh, where you're calling from and a project you're working on or you want to work on. And if you can answer all those questions, I'll give you a grand, central, skinny, headerless board. Yeah. Which I think is the most useful thing of what we got. Because you don't need an e-ink display. The friend needs an e-ink display. And the, the shield needs an Arduino. So I think the Grand Central is a good one. So call this number. Yeah. 
is on your screen. Ring this magical phone. Let me go home soon and go to bed. Yeah, it's almost over in the I'm hungry. So call. Yay! Who's calling? I'm gonna let it ring again. Ahoy, ahoy! Ahoy, ahoy! Get hung up. Get hung up. Terrible. Call again. Yeah. Okay. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Hello. Congratulations. You're the winner of a fabulous Ask Engineer prize. Yay. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Andy from Plain City, Ohio. Okay, Andy from Plain City, Ohio. Well, you're not plain. You're amazing. Uh, and congratulations. Uh, You've won a Grand Central. Uh, all you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, that's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at adafruit.com, and say, hey, it's Andy from Ohio, and I want a product number 4084. That's a Grand Central. And they'll send that to you right away to Ohio by expedited post. What's a project you're working on or you want to work on, Andy? I'm working on a portal version of a Twilight Zone prompt that gives you... Um, uh, fortune telling uh, or a fortune that's so cool so that's so tap, cool you it, tap it yeah okay you tap it and then what and then it gives you one of so many answers oh interesting reminds you a little bit of um, Colin did a project with the oblique strategy so that might be a useful uh, guide to check out um, how you like the new um, Twilight Zone you like the reboot or is it you like the classic more I think they're doing a good job keeping it towards the classic, but it's very modern and fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm kind of like, it's just like they're, they're adding like weird things that it's like, well, that's right, we have cell phones and social media now, but they're doing it in a fun way, and I like, I like the stories. They've been, they've been great so far. So uh, we're both fans, and I'd like to send you to Grand Central, and you can build something cool with it, or um, maybe do something spooky with it. Either way, don't forget to email support at hfruit.com. Thank you for calling in, Andy. Because uh, I'm excited to go. Thanks, Lady Ada. Go and eat food. Okay. <laughs> Good night. Bye. 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 Okay. Sweet. That's cool. Okay, that's our All show right. for tonight. I can't wait to see this prop. Oh, I forgot yeah. to tell him to come by show and tell and show his prop, but you know he knows. He's tonight. probably watching. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, we'll be posting up another video. Zach. The CEO and co-founder of Particle Stop by. We're going to be posting up that video soon. Lady Ada and Zach did an interview together. And then um, we have some more exciting news and new hardware and more. Stay tuned to all the places that you see the Adafruits. Thank you very much, everyone out there. We had three um, new hardware products this week. There's and a lot. There's going to be three more next week, too. Yeah. Um, special thanks to Takara, who's behind the thanks, scenes Takara. here in our thanks, um, Adafruit Slack. And... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, Takara. And then thank you, um, everyone in the Discord community who helps out, all the helpers. Um, thank Yay. you to all our Adafruit remote team members. Special thanks to all the Adafruit employees and Adafruit friends. We're here every single week. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much, everybody. Don't forget, um, Code Academy is the code. And uh, I got to feed an engineer. That's the next show. I know. <laughs> That's the next engineer. show. The, the, the show of one where I watch Lamarie. Um, um, we'll see everybody I next week. I have to power this brain Here. with calories. You, um, Shovel it in. Pad Thai goes in and breakup boards come out. Oh, I love Pad Thai. It's All right. Tasty. You guys are a moment of Zener. Bye. Bye, everybody.